Expand that conversation now. Aranchi Gonzalez is the executive director of the International Trade Center. She's with me in the studio right now. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Um, you launched an interesting program um, in Kenya today, earlier on with Barclays. Uh, they're putting about $700,000 into the program over five years, targeting 10,000 women entrepreneurs in this country. Tell us about that. The program is called She Trades, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we put more women in the economy. Mm -hmm. And for that, credit is an essential ingredient. So Barclays is setting up a fund worth 50 million US dollars mm -hmm. to provide loans to women in business, mm -hmm. to help them trade, to help them grow. Mm -hmm. But what they've realized is that it's not enough to create uh, the loan. You also need to support the women with entrepreneurial skills, with financial literacy, and finally with connecting them to, the, to markets, which mm -hmm. is how they can uh, get returns. And for that, Barclays is ready to put skin in the game because it's a good business. Lending to women in business is a good business. So I think the example that Barclays is giving us is extremely interesting. They are ready to support these women, be part of the economy, because they know that longer term, these women would become extremely good customers they're, of their they're services. They're essentially good credit risk. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Now, what is Barclays, how is Barclays doing this? Good dedication and commitment uh, to women's empowerment granularity it's not enough again to open a window for credit you have to go beyond that mm -hmm. and three partnerships and this is where the international trade center comes in we're going to do this together we're going to be supporting barclays in training the women in entrepreneurial skills we're going to connect them to markets we're going to support them in making sure they put those loans to good use are these are these loans priced at market rates or is there an element of a subsidy coming in to at least reduce the cost of credit? Because I mean at 17%, that's really, really steep and that's the average cost of credit in this market. So if you're lending SMEs money at that sort of price, I mean they've got to be making really, really high returns in order to pay that back to the bank. So the answer is yes, credit is a problem for small and medium enterprises. The cost of credit is too high for some segments of the economy. For other segments of the economy paying 17%, you have good margins, you can do that. Mm -hmm. For some other segments of the economy, particularly those that are lower, those that not necessarily are not necessarily exposed to international markets, mm -hmm. those that don't have the productivity that comes with being exposed to uh, trade, trading beyond the, your borders, this may be an inhibitor. And this is why the financial sector is seeing a bit of a revolution with lots of other financial actors than banks, than traditional financial institutions coming into the game mm -hmm. uh, and then disrupting a little bit this market so that the conditions at which we lend to the smaller guys, to the smaller companies, is a bit more affordable for them so that they can be part of the economy. The, a lot of people who might be looking at African economies might say, wait, hang on, but we've seen, we've seen an explosion in financial inclusion for the, over the last decade. I mean, yeah. if you roll back the clock to 2006, only about a quarter of Kenyan adults um, had access to formal financial products. Today, the proportion is well over 60%. But are we perhaps missing a gender angle to that particular issue? Did we leave women behind? We left women behind, but also we left the smaller actors behind and we left those in the middle behind. We have lots of great uh, ideas for microcredits and we are producing lots of microcredit that go to microproducers. Uh, the big guys, they can go to the bank and get good loans, but then you have those in the middle and for them it's much more difficult and they are the ones that are going to make the transformation of our economies. So if we can make sure that they are financially included. And women are a big part of this story because many women don't have collateral. Mm -hmm. And this is where it becomes very tricky. They don't possess assets. Mm -hmm. And they don't possess assets because very often the laws don't allow them to possess assets. Mm -hmm. So we have to change those laws. We have to make the case that including women financially is good for the economy. Mm -hmm. And if it's good for the economy, then we have to change the laws. Um, there's been quite a bit of talk about facilitating trade. Um, across mm. borders. This is something we talked about when we were in Kigali for the World Economic Forum in Africa. But when we're talking about um, facilitation of trade, and yet more often than not, that seems to focus mostly on the big boys. But we're not really looking at this missing middle in terms of enabling, say, a guy who's got a, a medium-sized farm on the Kenyan border of Uganda to be yeah. able to easily trade with his neighbors in Uganda. Aren't we missing the point there? We are working slowly but steadily towards that goal. I think every government has understood that with more than 90% of your private sector companies being small and medium guys, the costs for these companies are inhibitors of going international. If the cost is too high, 
then this, these companies cannot absorb those costs. So what's the game? The game is to lower the costs mm -hmm. for these smaller actors. Mm -hmm. And this means what? Reducing border procedures, the cost of crossing borders. This is what we call in the jargon trade facilitation. Yeah. For every extra day that you need to cross a border is 1% of extra costs the value of your, of your sale that mm -hmm. goes down the drain. Mm -hmm. So for every day that we cut the costs, we give 1% more to this small trader. Mm -hmm. So trade facilitation and non-tariff barriers versus trade in the 21st century. Tariffs don't matter that much, but non-tariff barriers, regulations, standards, certifications, thus is the name of the game. And this is why if we work on non-tariff barriers, if mm -hmm. we work on trade facilitation, we cut substantially the cost, we have helped the smaller guys go international. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. As always, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Right, so we've been speaking, of course, to Arancha Gonzalez. Uh, she's executive director of the International Trade Center. She'll be around for the United Nations uh, Conference on Trade and Development uh, in the Kenyan capital over the next couple of days.